Hey everybody, welcome to episode 33 of Duke's Download. We're back from holiday break and I am so excited to have um, my aunt, my aunt, um, Jane Weedlin from the Go-Go's with us as our guest uh, today. Um, I've known Jane my whole life. Um, she literally is like a second mom to me, um, as are all of the Go-Go's. And um, I am so excited that she is coming on today. Um, I'll give her a minute to come on. Let's see if she's on yet. Um, hold on. This is always, oop, Jesus. <laughs> this is always a interesting process. Um, hold on. Let's see if she's on. I don't think she's on yet. But yes, I haven't seen Jane since um, the Sundance Film Festival, so um, it's going to be really fun to talk to her. And thank you all for coming on. Wow, I see we have a pretty good amount of people that are coming on today. Um, bear with me, guys. She should be on momentarily. Uh, but yeah, I know I took a little time off during the holidays. Um, you know, I just felt not only with the holidays, but with what's been happening the last couple of weeks, I just thought it would be good <laughs> to give people a little time. I felt like maybe it wasn't uh, the right moment to be doing interviews. But um, hold on, I'm just waiting for Jane to come on still. Let's see. Oh yeah, well thank you, um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, this just started as something I thought I would do for fun, and here we are. What ten months later, and I'm on my thirty third interview. So um, you know, it's been it's been a fun uh, it's been a fun process so far. Um, you know, uh, it's been interesting. You know, just going from. Oh, my friend Alex says, remember when Jane jumped in the truck after the show? I know, that was really fun. Uh, God, hard to believe that was 11 years ago by now. Let's see. Let me text Jane really quickly while I'm on with all of you. Bear with me for one moment. I just texted Jane, so she should be on any second now. Um, but yeah, um, I haven't seen Jane since the Sundance Film Festival in January when we were all together um, for the premiere of the documentary. Um, those of you who haven't seen it, the DVD actually just came out, um, I think a few days ago. So if you're interested in getting the, um, the DVD for the Go-Go's documentary, it's now available. Um, let's see if she's on now. <laughs> I don't think she's on yet, but I talked to her a little earlier, so I know that we're on schedule. Oh, she is on. All right, I'm going to send her a request. It says waiting for Jane Weedlin. Am I on now? Hi. Hi. Oh my God, you look so good. Oh, thank you. I love your hair. Yeah, that was you didn't get all accident. you didn't get all made up just for me, did you? I, I mean, sure you look did. amazing. Oh Aww. my god, I can't go, I can't go on camera without makeup. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need it. I mean, I was I was when I was rewatching the Go Go's documentary, I was like, oh my god. I mean, I, you looked you looked so like just you looked you looked amazing. I was like, and you looked your makeup looked very you know didn't didn't look like you had a lot of makeup on. You looked amazing. So <laughs> well, you, you looked know, so good. The old the older you get, you, you can't wear a lot of makeup because it just like makes all the cracks and wrinkles look worse. So you have to be careful. You look, I mean, okay, you've always looked good, but I think you look better than you have like maybe ever. I mean, uh -huh. you, look, you look even better than you did in the documentary. You look insanely, oh. you look insanely good. I, well, okay, okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. I no, but what have you been like? What is what have you been exercising or like what is what's what have you been doing in uh, in Hawaii? Um, well, um, I've been living on a farm, mm -hmm. and um, we, me and my boyfriend Terrence have been um, working on the farm. And when we got it, it was just completely overgrown with all kinds of 
yucky weed trees and weeds. And so we had to get all the land cleared and then we started planting. I mean, I've, I've turned into like farm lady. And um, I also started cooking, which I've never cooked before. So that's weird. Wow. But, like, like what kind of, any specific type uh, of cooking? <laughs> nothing very exciting, but um, I never cooked at all before because like I was so terrified of the whole timing aspect of how you have to like, this part has to be done at this time and then this thing and then everything gets screwed up. Plus I had this other thing because um, I'm such a black and white person. Everything like the uh, temperature and things, it would always be either zero or high. So it was either constantly things weren't cooking at all or they were burning, right? <laughs> And I finally figured out, oh, there's all these gradations between nothing and everything. So, you know, it's sort of like a lesson in life, kind of. <laughs> I, I mean, like, I've had to learn, obviously, uh, being living on my own, like, how to, you know, you can actually put it on medium heat versus, like, yeah. and if you put it on high heat, then, like, it gets completely messed up. So Right? Okay, so that's that's something I learned, and um, oh, I just got two miniature donkeys. Woo! My mom, by the way, who's who's on with us, by the way, oh. she was like, yeah, "Please tell Jane how jealous I am because <laughs> she's got two miniature donkeys." So, like, how did that? So, wait, actually, let me back up a little bit. I okay. first from when I last saw you, which was a year ago, I think, okay. right? I mean, which is insane. Wow. You were at, at the Sundance Film Festival. I think that was Wait, the last oh time. Oh my God, that was a year ago already? A year Wait. ago. And you were still living in Mexico, right? Right. Yeah, It's that's funny. Um, So we loved living in Mexico. It was super great. We were living in the city of Merida, which is in the state of Yucatan. And it was really fun. But um, we, uh, a friend of mine, I, so I lived in Hawaii before, and I still had a lot of friends here. And this one friend of mine started, like, campaigning for me to come back. So she was like sending me all these properties and I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And then um, she's not a realtor, by the way. She just wanted me to come back. And then I found this one property that I really loved. And, um, you know, I just decided to go for it. And I was like, well, you know, maybe we wouldn't even live there. Maybe it's an investment. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And then as soon as we got over here, cause I like bought it from Cal well, when I was in California, of course. Miss Impulsive, right? <laughs> I, we get here and we both just fall in love with this place and we're just so happy here. And like the weather's like perfect all the time and there's almost no COVID, which I realize mm -hmm. is a temporary thing, but still you have mm -hmm. no idea how nice it is to feel safe, right? I mean. When did you, <laughs> when did you purchase, when did you make the decision? Pre-COVID or during? Uh, or? In, in July. Oh, so okay. So it's only been a, a a little while that we've been here but um yeah we're really um busting ass fixing up the land and i'm getting cute wow. animals <laughs> it's all about the animals and um swimming in the ocean and mm -hmm. fixing up the house and just having i love it it's like my favorite things to do basically so <laughs> i'm super happy was it uh, is it in the same place where you lived before in hawaii so same island, so I'm on the big mm -hmm. island, which is my favorite island because it's big. Um, and it has like, um, I think 13 different micro micro ecosystems. So like, oh, if it's like too rainy here, just drive a half hour and it won't be rainy. Or, you know, if it's too cold, because it really does, there's places here that are cold. Like actually where I am in the morning, it's like in the 50s, which wow. probably warm to people that live in the Midwest, but to me, that's freezing, right? To you too, right? Yeah. You, right? 50s it was 54 this anyway. morning in LA, and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, right? I'm like, all, I'm in Hawaii, like all bundled up, but then it warms up, and I don't know. So anyway, so I used to live in the Hilo side of the Big Island, which is the east side, which is super, super rainy and uh, incredibly green. Um, and this time I moved to the Kona side of the island, which, uh, down at the uh, sea level, it's super dry. It looks all deserty and stuff. But then if you go up into the mountains a little bit, then it gets really green and beautiful. So super mm -hmm. stoked to be here. I know people that know me know I move like every year or every two years. I'm a maniac. But this time I swear I'm going to try not to move. 
Well, with and the donkeys, like, it's not like you can take the donkeys uh, to San Francisco right? or L.A. Or, See, or... the donkeys live for 30 years, so I'm in for the long haul. So that means I will be 92 <laughs> when they are old, and I'll be, of course, really old. <laughs> Oh, I think you, you and my mom, I mean, all of you guys, all of you girls are going to be alive till you're 150. I have no doubt. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, if not longer. Um, but no, but so like the donkeys, uh, was that just like, I mean, so you have a, it's a farm then. It's, yeah, a, it's, it's a whole, farm. it's a, okay, got it. And, but there's, there's already a, a, obviously a home or a farmhouse oh, on the what? property. Clubhouse. It's called a barn, <laughs> but that's good. I like clubhouse better. Um, what we uh, what we did, like I said, is we cleared a bunch of the land and um, we created big pasture areas. And currently, um, I bought from Costco one of those roof things that you bring to like your kids' sporting events. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> cloth, and then it has four metal poles. Yeah. I bought one of those for the donkeys to get under if it's no. hot, hot or rainy. So that's temporary because. We're in the process of building a barn slash clubhouse. What is clubhouse? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, that's so sweet that you have you bought them the little like you know I overhang know, right? um, at, Costco. <laughs> at Costco. So there's a Costco nearby. That's that's big, that's that's big, the good news. Big dog, right? I how could I live yeah. without Costco? <laughs> No, I can't think, though, of a better place to be during this whole thing. I mean, like, I'm grateful my mom and dad are, you know, I'm grateful you're protecting Hawaii. My parents are protecting Thailand. Like, for you guys to not be in the mainland U.S. right now, yeah. given not just with COVID, but obviously all the political unrest and everything. I mean, I mean, what, obviously, I know how political you are. I mean, what, what has you been like your perspective on, not just with the political side, even with COVID? Like, what has it been like for you through this whole time how do you feel about everything well you know now we've been here for five or six months and then before that i was in mexico for 18 months so mm -hmm. i have been out of the fray but mm -hmm. um well all of last year i was so anxious and there was just so much upsetting things going on every day as you know and the thing with stupid trump was like every day there was a new thing and he'd get away with it. And I, that was the thing that made me the craziest because I have this like super overdeveloped sense of like, oh, right and wrong. And you know, like, oh, things have consequences until for one person, there's no consequences. So mm -hmm. that made me insane. And in a way, I'm really glad that I wasn't on the mainland because I think I would have lost my shit. I really do. I mean, it was bad enough like watching it from afar, but. Mm -hmm. being in the middle of it and even here there are trumpers here which makes me want to hurl um like they stand out on the highway and it's like oh my god please <laughs> and it's like, god ugh. and then i read something like 40 or 50 percent of the american population can't read above an eighth grade level and i'm like oh that's what's going on so then it it makes it a lot more understandable when you know those kind of statistics. Oh yeah, I mean, I think that's really what it comes down to is the reason America is mar far more susceptible to, I mean, other countries too, but particularly America with conspiracy theories and all that kind of stuff is that America just simply, it's, it may sound P un PC to say, but it's just not a very well-educated country in general. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, but that's not people's, that's not, you know, a lot of a lot of it is not people's fault. A lot of it is the yes. fact that they were raised in a, you know, uh, unfunded or underfunded, you know, underdeveloped educational system. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But it, um, it is a communistic thought that education should be better in this country. <laughs> that makes you a communist if you yeah. think that. <laughs> <laughs> or that we should give people health care, or we should give people... Oh, my God, health care. You know. Well, well, what are you... What are you... What did, I mean, this is so... It's like, you're a fascist, you're a socialist, you're a communist, you love Stalin. I mean, it just goes on and on. And, um, like, we're, we're, like, the most uncivilized first world country in the world. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Absolutely. Um, and but during this whole time, have you been writing or working on music at all, or what have you been? What have you been up to? Uh, other than other than cooking and raising donkeys. <laughs> You know, if you check out my Instagram feed, last year there was a lot of um, COVID parody songs that I was just doing to amuse myself. And I mean, that was most of the songwriting I was doing. Of course, the Go-Go's have Club Zero, our first single in like 20 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that was really fun to do that. Mm -hmm. um, regarding Club, oh, I was going to ask you a little later, but regarding Club Zero, like in speaking of the whole political thing, I think, I mean, the song, obviously, in any, uh, in general, and, and specifically with the Go-Go's, you know, it makes, is, you know, I, I get the, you know, the, the role the Go-Go's plays and, and you know, uh, what, the history of the women's movement and all that. But I mean, I think it's particularly sort of relevant, you know, that this song was written in the Trump era. Like, was that sort of, was that part of, on your mind when you wrote the song? Absolutely. I mean, when I had sort of like this wish list of what, the new Go-Go song could be, it was like, it had to be super anthemic, had to be super catchy. It had to be punky so we could remind people of our roots. But most of all, it had to be topical and important and be about women, pro-women, and you know, also pro-men that are pro-women, you know, it's not just for women, but yeah, there's just so much going on. You just have to, if you can, you have to speak up. So that was super important to me. Mm -hmm. And I know you've always been super vocal about not just politics, but animal rights and all that. But mm -hmm. like when you were when you were starting, I asked you know my mom this question. I asked um, like Gina and Kathy this question. But like, was, and it's kind of interesting because I think each of you maybe have a slightly different perspective on it. Were you an, were you an aware that you were a feminist at, at back then, or was that something that you were conscious of, or not really? I think at the time. First of all, the word feminist was like super dirty word. I mean, you you, mm -hmm. you may as well call someone like a Nazi or whatever. It was a really awful word. And everyone was indoctrinated like, oh my God, you can't say that. If you do, like you're, you're gross. And so we didn't call ourselves feminists, but absolutely in all of our actions, we were feminists, you know, mm -hmm. like we blazed the way. We didn't let, we controlled our, our own destinies and careers. It wasn't men doing it. Um, I just think in every way possible, except for literally using the word feminist, we were feminists. And of course, now I'm proud to say I am a feminist. And all it means is like making men and women equal. What is the big deal? Oh my God, it's crazy. Oh yeah. I mean, like you said, or like we said regarding the whole socialist communist thing, I mean, you know, these are things that should be so, like, the fact we're wasting our lives still, like, debating these types of issues, yeah. you know, when we have so many real problems is, yeah. you know, yes. it's, it's, it's pathetic. It's, I mean, you know, it really is like it's, but I think hopefully with Biden and, and Kamala, hopefully we're going to see some, in Democratic Senate, hopefully we're going to see some some change. You know, some real change. Man, I hope so. Just having all three sections now, like, it's just like, imagine what we can do. And I know there's, I mean, the, the list is so long now. I mean, the last four years, so many American values have just been destroyed. Uh, for me, one of the main things I worry about is all the environmental protections that just got taken away, right? As mm -hmm. if we don't need clean air or clean water, or we don't care about animals going on the uh, endangered list or becoming extinct, like that stuff makes me so crazy. And I really hope that there's room in the administration to spend time on that too. Cause I know there's a lot of other stuff that's important. I mean, oh, yeah. especially I would say, okay, besides that, fucking Black Lives Matter, just that riot the other day and the police mm -hmm. not even showing up for hours and then showing up and taking selfies with them and, I mean, if those had been black people, they would all be dead. And it just, it's so insane. I know mm -hmm. I'm of course not the first person to say this, but I just mm -hmm. am so bewildered all the time. Like, how does someone not see that? Mm -hmm. uh, my mom and I, were when we talked a little earlier, we, I was like, like the fact that that idiot, 
um, who, you know, was demanding his organic diet or whatever in, in prison, you know, the, did you hear about oh, this? Yeah. The, the guy, I mean, like, okay, organic yes. diet, great. Yeah. But the fact that he would be yeah. asking for it and like going on a hunger right. strike, it's like, wait a second, if you were black, you'd be dead, most yeah. likely. Like yeah. now, and, but now they're, they're like, you know, uh, allowing him all of these like, you know, special privileges right. in prison. It's right. like, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, and it's like, so people that care about equality and, um, and, you know, we care about equality, so we're monsters. Oh, and snowflakes. We're snowflakes, right? <laughs> and this guy is in jail demanding vegan food, and he's not a fucking snowflake? Give me a break. <laughs> oh, plus that guy lives in his parents' basement. That, that yeah. you know, bowhorn dude. All those people, well, not all of them, but most of those people live in their parents' basements, and they just need to, to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> by the way my mom says babe are you there too because i think gina's gina's on here too oh my so, God. yeah babe. i think pe uh, babe. i think she's on here yeah babe and babe. Babe. <laughs> um and, but another thing about the whole the whole feminist thing like you know not to say because of course you know i i um, feel very strongly about the whole rock and roll hall of fame thing but i think it also is interesting when you look at the fact that like yes, of course, it's 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 insulting to the Go Go's specifically, but it's also in, you know they only have like I think ten percent or something or fifteen percent of their inductees are um, are women and someone like I I brought this subject up because I see people in the comments talking about it like mm -hmm. you know so I think there's in like like in a lot of our institutions you know there's I think there's clearly a issue not just with the go-go's but with women in general you know and in music and um you know and the fact that Cher isn't in there which is just like beyond i mean i will i'm not one name names but there's certain bands or groups or artists that should not be in there at least they shouldn't be in there before Cher, and yet right. yeah and so there's clearly like a systemic issue within that institution i mean what do you think about about that I think in the past, it's been a big boys club and there's been people in that boys club that just didn't get the go-go's or, or just, yeah, I mean, they would never say that they were sexist. Clearly, though, the fact that they were overlooking almost all women artists says something about them, like you said. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I've heard I a lot of the, excuse me. <coughs> I've heard that a lot of the people in the, uh, the choosing committee, whatever you call it, um, have changed over. So My mom says they can kiss our in. asses. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, and I think, like you, yeah, like you said, whoever the new chairman of the board is or something, or, you know, he, yeah, I think he even said on the record, I might be wrong, but I think he said in an interview that he thinks the Go-Go's I forgot where I read this, but even he actually said he thinks the Go-Go's are likely to be nominated this coming year. So I think I read that correctly. Um, so I mean, yeah, but I mean, it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. If you guys <coughs> are nominated, you guys are, I won't, you know, I'll let you, I'll let you guys speak for how you plan to, to, to address that if that happens. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. I'm with, I'm with your mom, like in a way, who cares? Like, I feel like they've kind of made a mockery of the whole idea of a rock and roll hall of fame. But on the other hand, it's like, God damn it, we should be in it. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have, I mean, I have mixed feel and feelings. I mean, of course, I'm, I, I'm, I'm angry, but, or, you know, frustrated, but I'm also like you, you know, I, I feel it is, you know, it, it, if it happens, it'll be, it'll be like, okay, now we actually have to decide whether this is something we actually want to, you know, it's a different thing when it actually becomes real. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> um, but by, by the way, of course, I have to bring up the fact that Tom Hanks, that whole thing was beyond oh. unbelievable. Uh, I mean, for those of you who don't know, maybe you can t talk a bit about it, Jane, because oh, it's well, pretty amazing. I mean, I guess it was the other night, um, it was the Stephen Colbert show. Tom Hanks was on. And I mean, who doesn't love Tom Hanks? He's so amazing. He's so talented. He's so kind. I mean, he's just like 
everything. He's like the best movie star of all. Mm -hmm. And they were doing this questionnaire thing and Stephen Colbert asked him if he could only listen to one song for the rest of the life, his life, what would it be? And he said, our lips are sealed. Yeah. And Stephen Colbert started laughing like, the, like he was joking. Like he like literally fell off his chair laughing. And I was kind of like, God damn it, Stephen Colbert. I love you, you know? I used to think I should marry him and shit like that. And then I was like, huh, oh, he doesn't even like the Go-Go's. But that's not the important thing. The important thing that Tom Hanks yeah. loves the Go-Go's and loves our lips yeah. sealed. So And the yeah. fact, I love that he acknowledged the fact that you wrote the song and, you know, um, because I really yeah, think I it is. I think it is one of the, honestly, I mean, putting my personal connection aside, <laughs> I think, I mean, not only do I think that's one of the greatest songs ever written, I think you're one of the best songwriters of all time. Oh, I mean, okay. no, but literally, you wrote, what, Our Lips Are Sealed is in the top 100, like, pop songs of all time, according to Rolling Stone? Yeah, Rolling Stone says so. Yeah, I mean, so I think it's amazing that, I mean, look, with, with Stephen's reaction, I think part of the documentary and part of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is hopefully, you know, because I've known this, you know, of course, my whole life, but you know, a lot of people don't realize that the Go-Go's actually aren't just a pop, like poppy, light sort of poppy band. You know, they're mm -hmm. a, you guys are actually, you know, incredibly talented, uh, accomplished musicians. So I think, you know, there's that initial like, oh, they're the, you know, they're the fun 80s band. But I think that's changing, hopefully now. Yeah, that perception. I've, I've noticed since the documentary, because it was pretty much stated over and over again about us being the first all-female band to write their own songs, play their own instruments, um, form, get together without any men controlling us to have a number one Billboard album. And like that has never happened again. That statement was said several times. And now I've noticed every time the Go-Go's get pressed, they always say that. Mm -hmm. That's a completely new phenomena. It mm -hmm. is. They're, that, they, ne they never said that before. So this that's really good news for us. I always thought, and same thing with the punk thing, like I always just assumed that people understood that the Go-Go's were originally a punk band. And then when I like, and then when I watch, like well, even friends of mine, like when they would watch the documentary, they were like, really? Like, I didn't know that. I was like, what? <laughs> like, isn't that kind of a well-known fact? But, you know, I get, and obviously not everybody's, knowledge is as you know uh yeah. you know i would I mean, say almost no one knows that we were a punk band well hopefully that's changed because of the film right. but i used to get in fights with like trolls online because there'd be an article and it would say like the go-go started out in the la punk scene and then someone would go go's were never punk and i'd be like oh my god <laughs> you weren't there like yeah exactly like, such a weird thing to lie about anyways yeah we're lying we made that up but of course now the documentary has all this amazing footage i particularly love when they show belinda in the crowd watching a punk band and they show me in a crowd watching a punk band and you could see that like we were fans first and of course we all still remain huge fans well and i don't want to keep you for too long i also don't want to like i wasn't even planning to ask this question but i don't know if i've ever even asked you this like, because I hear different versions, but like, what is, is what is the actual, mo when was the actual moment? And what was the actual moment when you and my mom, like, and we're having that conversation? Like, was it, was it on the curb at a, uh, after a party or like what? I hear different versions of this. I don't think I've even asked my mom this, but I, you guys were the, honest, dude, you guys were I the don't first remember. two, right? Okay. I don't remember, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm finally gonna hear the story. <laughs> yeah, right? I remember seeing Glinda around and just being like, oh my God, she's so beautiful, because she was, and then she had this amazing style, and and then somehow we just started talking, but I don't remember the moment. Mm -hmm. But but it was, you You two were the first, along with the first, uh, the, the founders, along with... I think it was Margo and Belinda that talked about it first, and then me mm -hmm. next. Got it. So... Got it. Hard to believe it's what, 41 years ago? It's 42 years ago. That's I, insane. No, now that it's 2021, that in, in May, it'll be 43 years. That is insane. Crazy, right? That is mind blowing. Um, I know. And I mean, like, was you, what were you, like, was songwriting something that you were particular, like, how did that, how did that, how did you, 
even sort of discover and then finesse that talent and that interest in in that area? Um, well, I wasn't a songwriter, um, but did you I just sort of writing. decide? Like, was it something that I, I happened just loved organically? Writing. I loved reading. I loved books, and so I just started writing lyrics, and then um, a few people in the scene kind of helped me a little bit. Like, well, this is how you write a song, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It just kind of fell together because I feel like one of my big things in my brain is I like to be creative. So I was very drawn to songwriting. And especially when Charlotte joined the band and we started writing together, that's when the songwriting got really good, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, it's so, it's just songwriting is such a. It was something it, in my throat. It's not yeah. COVID, people. I have something in my throat. Okay. Go on. Um, no, it's, just, it's so interesting to me, not just, I mean, you and Charlotte, but also just songwriting in general, how it's like, how do you, how does someone, it's, I mean, same with any like talent singing or, but like, how do you know, you know, how do you discover that you're actually good at this thing, you know, because a lot, in a lot of cases, like with songwriting in particular, I would say you either kind of have it or you don't. It's like, it's one of those, it's a mental thing, you know, I don't know if it's your brain or it's it's a really particular thing and and to be able to discover that you have that talent you know i guess it happens for people in different different ways well you know, yeah i mean that I moment mean, of realization people there's people that are kind of born musical and become musicians at an early age that wasn't me at all but i will say this i started listening to the beatles when i was like i don't know six years old or something and listening to them hours and hours every day like I was such a, a pop music junkie growing up I don't know maybe those hundreds of thousands of songs in my head just helped or something that and the fact that I am kind of creative in general like you know I do lots of creative stuff so maybe that was the joining of those two things in my brain that made it possible and speaking of that like is Electro Domestico yeah I know you had a tour plan that was scheduled that was canceled because of COVID right I know right we had a spring tour opening for the psychedelic furs and we were so excited and then of course we had the go-go's tour in june and july also canceled and um so now i mean i'm in hawaii pietro moved back to italy and yeah like, he's living like in a forest in a little tiny house he's super happy growing all his own food um yeah. but i i hope electro de Vesico will do more stuff in the future because that's such a rewarding project for me also because First of all, working with Pietro is the greatest thing in the world. He's the world's nicest man. I think he's like the most talented person I know, like amazing songwriter, amazing vocalist, like perfect pitch. Um, and I don't know, he's just great. I love working with him, so we'll see. I wish I could have seen that tour. I mean, you and uh, Psychedelic Furs, right? Yeah. That would have yeah. been so much fun. I will hopefully, yeah. like you said, hopefully there'll be, there will be future tours. And mm -hmm. um, regarding the Go-Go's tour, I mean, I, I read something like a day or two ago about Fauci saying that he thinks by the end of the year or the fall, he thinks uh, shows will be back. And I'm like, shit, like the tour is supposed to be what, in July and August? June and July, oh, yeah. I, I mean, mean I, I feel at this point, even if you're obviously an expert like Fauci, I don't know how anybody can know, especially because so many Americans are acting so unpredictably. Right. You know, like if everyone was towing the line and being safe, it'd be one thing, but that's right. not happening. So how do we know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, I think, yeah, I, mean, it's, I just read about at least here in California that the numbers are starting to go down again but, and that the hospitalizations are, you know, plateaued. So, I mean, hopefully that's a sign that, you know, but I mean, who knows? I mean, it, it's getting a little warmer, so maybe that's part of it people here at least are being a little more mind maybe because things are so bad here. I think people are particularly like, you know, aware of what they're doing. And, mm -hmm. but I hope that I'm praying that because I haven't, like, I haven't seen my mom and dad since oh my God. last January, since uh, Sundance, I haven't seen my mom. So, uh. you know, so uh, I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping the plan is unless yet again, the tour gets canceled that I'll get to see them when they come out here for the tour. So, you know, it's, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a bizarre, weird time, you it's know. It's the weirdest time ever, it really is. 
I mean, what, what can you say? You know? <laughs> but I can't wait to see you again. And I can't wait to see the whole, the whole band again. So hopefully June, June. Where are the first shows? Like, do you know where, do you remember off where the first shows are? Are they on the East Coast? No. You know, I'm one of those people that I basically, they could just put a leash on me and go, okay, now you're going to this town. Okay, get up on stage, do a show. Okay, go to the hotel, go to bed. Like, I'm so oblivious when I'm on tour. It's crazy. Well, wherever it is, um, I'll see you. I'll see you soon, hopefully. I hope yeah. so, Luke. It's so great to talk to you. Love you. And Thank you so much for doing this. Seriously. All your aunties love you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like become, it's become a thing. I didn't intend it to be a thing, but like when I, I, I one time I called you guys my aunts with quotes uh -huh. on like Facebook or something and that got picked up. And then like, I'm like, oh, okay, well from now on, you're my Auntie Jane and my Auntie Kathy and my Auntie Gina and so on. Well, honestly, <laughs> Auntie Charlotte. I just remember you from such a, a young kid and oh my god it is like we're you're related to me because it's like how I am with my nieces and nephews I can picture them that they're adults now but I can also picture them as little kids well I was thinking you know it's weird because in my head like when I go on tour with you guys and when I'm at a show and I'm backstage I still feel like a kid like the way I was backstage when I was which is why kind of why like my mom as you know will like sometimes be like okay get out of the dressing room yes! like you know we have to get dressed because in my mind I'm still like the little eight-year-old sitting on the chair in the corner you know playing my Game Boy or something you know it's like that's still my I don't realize I'm an almost 30 year old man like <laughs> sitting in the dressing room with you guys and not only that, but I mean, I think the fans, if they saw Belinda and knew how you interact and how Belinda is your mom, she's a mom, and yeah. seeing her act like a mom, they'd be like, no, that can't be Belinda. Yeah. It's pretty funny to see you guys together. And sometimes the bickering, and it's like, <laughs> oh, my God, it reminds me so much of my little brother and his kids, how they bicker with each other. It's like, oh. Well, it is sort of a, well, you're right. It's sort of, it is, it is sort of a, that's part of why I still feel like a kid because in a good way, I mean, I love her for it, but she treats, she does treat me like a kid sometimes because <laughs> I think of myself as a kid when I'm around her, them and around, around you and around them, they think of me as a kid because as they always say, I'll always be there, a little boy. So the, the dynamic is actually kind of similar to the way it was 20 years ago, you know? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, I love you so much and love thank you for too. doing this. See you soon, I hope, and be safe. I hope I see All you right. soon, and stay safe. Thank you. Love you. And thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye. <laughs>